Hi, I'm Anton Lavoisier. You've seen me in such fine quality epic chemistry videos such as Electron Configurations and You, Part 4, and Orbital Notations. What connection is there with electrons? Okay, this is dealing with Chapter 7, I mean Chapter 4, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused with my other classes. Okay. Uh, we're here to learn about electron orbital notation and electron configuration. So we're going to go and run through some examples and well, hopefully you'll pick up something along the way. So what I have here, I have one corner here where I have all these boxes and then down here I have element and electron configuration and okay, what's up with the boxes and the numbers like 5s and all that, I, I'm, I'm not getting this. All right. With atoms, you in the center of the atom, you have protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons don't have a charge. But to balance out what is in the nucleus of the atom, you have these tiny little particles called electrons. Now, they have a negative charge that goes around. Now, the thing is, electrons go around in areas around the nucleus of the atom. And yes, they know some electrons have actually gone through the nucleus and come out the other side, but that's outside of what we're covering here. Now, Bohr came up with this idea that there are primary energy levels that surround the nucleus of the atom, and he was partly right in that. There are, but there's a lot more to it, okay? When we talk about Werner Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, where he says there's no way to predict where the electron's going to be and how much energy it's going to have. So really, when we look at these boxes, these are areas that exist only when the electron's inside there. Because if the electron is not in there, that area does not exist. Okay? So with that, we have to start understanding that level one is the simplest level that we have. That is the closest to the nucleus. Then we have level two. And then we have level three, level four, level five, level six, and so on. Now inside of each level, you have something called sublevels. Now, the sublevels, inside the sublevels, you have what are called orbitals. These are areas that electrons can hang out in. They only come into existence when the electrons are actually in there. If the electron leaves, that area doesn't exist. Okay? Now, how is it that the electrons leave? If they pick up energy. If they pick up energy from an outside source, which that's what they actually do, they jump levels. They will jump to a higher energy level, a higher sublevel. Okay, than where they have been before. When they come down, as they make their way to find the lowest energy level possible, they give off energy, which results in some kind of light or some kind of infrared or ultraviolet radiation. So that's just giving you the big picture in a nutshell. So when we're looking at this, okay, let's go ahead and let's start working with it. So I'm going to go ahead and let's start with element number one, hydrogen. Now hydrogen is the smallest element out there. There's plenty of it. Most plentiful element in the universe, it's got one electron to it. Just one. Now for us, that means where in these boxes would this one electron go? And what would we represent it by? Well, it's going to always go for the lowest available energy. And that's something called the off bow principle, okay? So inside there, we're going to draw an arrow that represents an electron, but the electron is spinning, okay? So we're going to have the arrow go up for our electron here for the hydrogen. This is orbital notation, okay? Where we have an arrow inside the box that says 1s on it. Now we also have, we also have the electron configuration. Now the electron configuration, guys, is taking what we have here in the orbital notation and squeeze it down a little bit shorter. So in this case here, our electron configuration for hydrogen is 1s. Level 1, sublevel s. You never need to put the 1 there. We assume that if you wrote 1s, that there is an electron there. Okay? So that's our smallest one. Now, let's go and look at the next element in line. We're going to go for helium. Helium is H-E, and it has two electrons to it. This is my abbreviation. 
for electron, e to the minus. So with helium, again, we're going to have how many arrows? Well, we're going to have two, one for each electron. So when we draw it, we'll draw an arrow going up. Now, some people would say, oh, we can draw an arrow going up also to make the two. No, you can't. There is another rule. There is another rule in there put forth by a guy named Paul Lee, P-A-U-L-I. What he said was that no two electrons can be in the same exact address at the same time. It's like two celebrity ladies going to the same awards ceremony and they are wearing the exact same outfit by the exact same designer in the exact same color and the exact same trimmings. You know this doesn't work. It doesn't work in real life and it doesn't work here. So that means the only way electrons can stay in the same sublevel, they have to spin opposite of each other. So one goes clockwise, the other goes counterclockwise. That's the idea. So how do we represent it? We have an arrow going up, we have an arrow going down. That's what it looks like. So this is what helium will look like. What's the electron configuration for helium? 1s2. Level 1, that's our primary energy level, sublevel s, and we have 1, 2, 2 electrons in there. So that's how it looks. Now, if you look at helium and compare it to hydrogen, you're going to know, well, hey, helium is a bigger atom. That's true. Helium is also a noble gas. It's much more stable than the hydrogen. The hydrogen is more likely to blow up compared to helium. Well, why? Hydrogen is missing something. And because it's missing something, it will want to connect with another atom. But that's more in a later chapter at a later time. But helium is quite stable, and it's going to be very hard to get it to react. All right, let's go and erase this, and let's move on. We're going to go ahead, and let's check out lithium. Now, lithium is element number three. So lithium has three electrons to it. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do one, two, all right, and then our third one, we're going to put it in 2s. Well, why aren't we putting it in 2p? Because you're going for the lowest available open energy level and sublevel possible. And 2s is a little bit less energy than the 2p. Okay, that's why we're filling in the 2s. So here we are with our three electrons. Our electron configuration is 1s2, 2s. That's what we have, ladies and gentlemen, for lithium. Okay, any questions? <laughs> That's right, it's a video. Of course you don't have any questions. If you're still kind of stuck, rewind it and go back again, or if you dare, continue this adventure. All right, let's pick another one. Time to go and pick a bigger one. Okay, and I'm thinking I'm gonna go for oxygen. Now oxygen has eight electrons to it. We kind of need it to survive. Okay, and we're going to go with one, two, always our first level, easiest one to fill. Okay, three, four, and then we got to come to here to the P. Five, six, seven. Wait, couldn't you put the two over here? No, there is something called the Huns rule where they say when you put the electrons in, you have to fill in each sublevel orbital first before you go on back to the original and fill it, okay? So, that's the idea behind it. This was filmed in front of a live audience, okay? I'm going to bid them farewell. I'm going to continue with the video, okay? So, with this, and some of you will be immortalized somewhere on the internet. Okay. So here's. Forgive them, they really don't know what they're doing. This might possibly provide some material in the future for if I don't release this video, what do I get? Okay. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, what about the electron configuration? It'll be 1s2, 2s2, 
and 2P4. So that's the electron configuration. It's telling the same thing as what you're seeing here, except it's a lot shorter. Okay? All right. Let's go with something a little bit larger, and we'll do a couple of more examples, and then we're going to call it a day for us. Okay? Let's go for something a little bit bigger. Let's go for something a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and let's go for something like sodium. So sodium has 11 electrons. Okay, so I know that 1s is going to be automatically filled. I know that 2s is going to be automatically filled. And that's going to take care of 4. That means I've got 7 left. So with 7, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now my 2p is filled. I go up for 3s, and there's my 7. So I have 11 electrons in here. Okay? So what is that going to look like for the electron configuration? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. Okay? So that's what it's going to look like. Okay. The thing is, guys, if you look at sodium, sodium is not particularly stable. Okay? That one electron, it would like to get rid of it. Now, I do have a couple of students uh, in here, so if you're hearing background noise, that's okay. Okay? Subscribe to PewDiePie. All right. Now, guys, let's take a look at one more. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine has got 17 electrons to it, okay? Definitely a bigger molecule compared to the sodium. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Notice how I have my arrows going up and down. This is because of the electrons are spinning opposite of each other. Now here's chlorine with its 17 electrons. Here's sodium with its 11 electrons. So let's look at our notation here. For chlorine, it'll be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p5. That is our electron configuration for chlorine. Okay? Well, it's the end of the day here, and thank you for bearing with me with the uh, background noise, but I'm hoping that this will benefit you guys for electron configuration. I'm oh, sorry, electron configuration here, and this is electron orbital notation. And with that, I bid you farewell, and God bless you.